Hey neighbor, welcome back to ARTV. My name is John and it's time to celebrate the 20th anniversary of one of the most iconic and also controversial albums of all time, the fourth studio album released October 2nd, 2000, Kid A by Radiohead. My goal with this review is to not just sit down and regurgitate every history lesson on this album that you've ever heard, because God knows it's one of the most discussed albums of all time, and probably rightfully so. It was a major curveball that most people did not see coming. It was panned by some at the time, it's turned into a cult classic, and even people in the mainstream talk about this record. So my goal with this review is to give you my perspective and insight, and it's something that I think we can all get caught up in trying to just talk about what everybody else talks about, but I want to talk about what this album means to me. I used to think that Radiohead were one of the most pretentious bands on the planet. I had not listened to their entire discography, of course. I was basing that off of some songs or maybe a couple of records, including this one, Kid A. I thought it was intentionally inaccessible. I thought they were trying to be way too heady or deep and not really having any actual perspective on it. I just spouted that out until I heard A Moonshaped Pool in 2016. That, of course, piqued my curiosity and it sparked my own personal journey with diving headfirst into Radiohead and them eventually becoming one of my top 10 favorite bands of all time. If you want to see more coverage of me kind of going through Radiohead's back catalog, then there should be a card on screen now or else a link at the end of the video. I often think to myself, did Radiohead pioneer what we know now as the surprise release? Just kind of dropping an album without singles or promotion, no intense media parade or anything like that. They've done that a few times throughout their career, but Kid A needed to happen the way that it did for Tom York, the frontman of this band. He was having a severe mental breakdown on the touring process for OK Computer, one of my personal favorite records of all time, and the one that made me fall head over heels in love with this band, but it was also a major major pivot from that album because they weren't happy with the people that were kind of riding their coattails and being too influenced by what they were laying down. To further separate themselves from those that they felt were riding their coattails, Radiohead drew this line in the sand where they said, only we are going to be able to transcend this level. No one else is doing what Kid A is. In fact, I feel like this record is kind of like Tom York and maybe the rest of the band to an extent, just sitting down and clipping out, cutting and pasting from a magazine like a teenager would to decorate their room. He's taking what he finds fascinating. He's looking at different ideas and perspectives. And instead of putting them necessarily into coherent statements, he's rambling about kind of wildly, swinging about, intentionally being confusing. And I think that's why I got off on the wrong foot with Kid A. While I don't see the rest of Radiohead as being some sort of afterthought in the creative process, I do see Tom as the leader of this movement, intentionally creating atmosphere, something that creates a very visceral and emotional reaction. It's something that I didn't see or hear at first. I just saw something that was really hard to get into, and it felt like it was maybe going right over my head. And then I eventually settled into the mood of the album, something that feels like it was made for a chilly fall morning, or even a dark, isolated, heart of winter type of mood. And while this album was, of course, striking, I'm sure, back in 2000, although that's not when I discovered it myself, it feels even more relevant with what we're all going through with isolation and change and just feeling like an out-of-body experience in 2020. I did not like this record when I first started listening to full Radiohead albums in 2016. I had been exposed to a moon-shaped pool, I ended up loving it, it broke down the wall, and while I wasn't quite there with Kid A, over the years I've really come to see this album for what it is. It's kind of expansive, extravagant in its own way. There's a wide-reaching scope of instrumentation, lyricism. The quality is really unparalleled. I've never heard a record that sounds quite like Kid A. And because, once again, it's Radiohead doing this, it's something that only they could really accomplish. Radiohead are the opposite of pretentious here. If anything, this album was the out-of-body death of ego experiment gone so right, it kind of changed the scope of modern music history. 
It's an album so influential, you could see anybody from me to Anthony Fantano to the New York Times doing a think piece on it. They took themselves out of the equation with album four, making this feel like a very selfless effort. They knew that their frontman needed to take this route, and while there was some infighting within Radiohead leading up to the creation of this, once they all got on the same page, it feels like this unnerving body of work that constantly throws your mind off of its own games because it so routinely cleans house and subverts expectations. Even though I didn't like this album at first, there were always a couple of songs that I would come back to that I thought were enjoyable to a degree, from Morning Bell to the National Anthem. Those kept me on the line and curious, but the first piece of the jigsaw that truly fell into place is everything in its right place. The bizarre, but atmospheric as hell and just chilling opening track from Kid A. For me, this is one of the most haunting breaths of fresh air to open up an album ever. It's like opening the cabin door on the set of The Evil Dead in the middle of winter. You just, you instantly feel this chill run through your bones. It kind of almost spooks you to a degree, but as you just kind of hang on the line and you hear those Kid A vocals get manipulated in there and the rest of the song slowly works its way into your cold black heart, it's a bizarre piece but a bizarre fantastic one that sticks with you. From there, we segue into the title track, Kid A, which features a whole lot of vocoded vocals. I really think that Nigel Godrich, their producer, and Tom did a fantastic job at stapling this one in because instantly with this record, it already feels like an essential puzzle piece. It kind of feels like a fever dream to a degree. It's like you're suspended in the air, just kind of hanging there. There's intense processing going on, and it makes this an obvious winner, something that's so important to the record. But what keeps me coming back to this song and wanting to listen to this album as a full body experience is just the unknown, the things that you just uncover each time you come back and listen. The National Anthem moves in next and it features this warped bass line that just kind of repeats throughout. It's the grinder that just gets the job done. It keeps coming back for more. And to me, listening to this song, it feels like the bass is a car in traffic. It's going the exact same speed. It's on cruise control driving in the same lane. But once you add in the orchestral elements, the jazzy percussion, everything else feels like cars around it just swerving, changing lanes, speeding up and slowing down, but the bass never loses time and it stays the same speed. It's really interesting to think about because even in the midst of the chaos, it feels like they're in complete control and I don't know that I can say that about too many bands out there. Emotional tightropes and the response that we the listener have to this record is something that I've harped on several times already as being a key ingredient for Kid A, but perhaps the most emotional song on the entire album is How to Disappear Completely. I feel so much sadness as Tom sings lines like, I'm not here, this isn't happening. It feels like a gut punch, a stab to the chest, a blow from an enemy or even a friend that you didn't see coming. And it just makes you want to crawl up into a hole. And Tom himself said that he felt like a ghost as he wrote this one. I've intentionally not looked too much into the lyrics and the theories that people have on those, just kind of paying attention to what the band themselves have said. But I know that even if they are not the emphasis, this is the one that absolutely got me on the line and said to me, this is not pretentiousness. This is not somebody parading around masquerading as something they're not. They're being genuine with their emotions. It's just kind of buried at times. And that makes it that much better when you're able to fully uncover it. Tree Fingers descends next as this ethereal instrumental piece that ends up serving as the perfect drawbridge that slowly lowers into the album's second half. From there, we go into Optimistic, which is the most guitar-focused song on the album. I don't think that optimism has ever sounded so gloriously pessimistic, just so upfront about it. It's obvious sarcasm, if you ask me. It's a track that's so engrossing, so fully enveloping, and by the end, you're hanging on every little chord, every little stroke of the guitar, and everything that's fluttering around in the background. It's immensely catchy, but it's also extremely cathartic. Oh no, I almost failed to mention Phil Selway's electrifying drum performance on this cut. It's so there in the mix, it's so rich, and it's so apparent, kind of in your face at times. It never backs down, and I love that about it. The outro of this song is just an eargasm. 
I teeter back and forth on the next offering in Limbo, because while this is a solid enough song, I do like some of the ideas, I can't help but feel like we're just wandering in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. And while on some of these other tracks I've mentioned that visceral response that I have, I can almost see Tom coming out of the water on some of these gloomy cuts like How to Disappear Completely, and I can see the forest in the clear and everything else on tree fingers. This one, it doesn't generate that heavy of a response for me. I like certain sections of the song, but repetition often kind of brings it down, and while I still feel that this record is kind of perfect as a whole. I obviously didn't always feel that way. If I had to pick out a least favorite, it would probably be this. Immediately following this, they set the bar up high once again with Idiotech, a tin can percussion aggressive type of song that features some really gloomy bass work and also an electronic persona. There's a lot of tinkering in the background of the song, and I do feel that Tom's vocals are some of the best on the entire record. There's some genuine moments of ecstasy here, but right after that, we move into Morning Bell, and this is my personal favorite song on the entire album, Kid A, and also Tom's most transcendent vocal performance. The man is an angel here, and you cannot convince me otherwise. Morning Bell has this kind of pensive, hypnotic drum pattern, and some brooding bass sets the pendulum in motion. As I mentioned, Tom vocally transcends everything and shines with the spotlight directly on his voice. The mixing on this track is perfect. You can hear everything standing out, every little detail. It just glimmers in the mix. And I highly, highly encourage you, listen to this album with headphones. If you've never listened to it and you're listening to it for the first time on a laptop speaker, don't even bother. Radiohead then seemingly cast a spell over everyone as they close out this album with motion picture soundtrack. They've never shied away in the past from sounding like they're doing a film score. It's something that they've in fact encouraged. But this track really feels symphonic in nature, also something that I'm drawn to. It closes the album with an untitled hidden track. If you're listening on streaming, then it's separated into its own entity. And it's something that absolutely spurs the conversation and makes you want to start the album again almost, to kind of uncover something new. Like maybe, maybe, just maybe, I missed something there, and those details make you want to come back for more. My goal when I set out to make this review about a year ago and eventually landed on the 20th anniversary as the perfect time to drop it was not to have the popular opinion and not just to spit back out what everyone else had said about it. But in the recent years, this album has grown on me more and more and more. It's something that absolutely I can understand where you're coming from. If you can't get into it on first, second, or even third listen, you probably won't. It's probably going to take at least five to start uncovering. And I know that might sound pretentious to even say that, oh, you have to listen to it this many times. It can feel like a very daunting task. And I was once in that same boat. But today, I sit here on the 20th anniversary of this legendary record, and I cannot say anything other than a perfect score for Kid A. This is a truly transcendent experience, one that both haunts and propels me. It influenced my curiosity with music. It helped me get into other genres that I had previously never really laid a finger on. So if you're curious, I highly encourage you to experience this album as a full body of work. It's something that if you want to see favorites and least favorites, I can try and put those down below, but it truly won't do it justice because you need to listen to this as one piece. I truly appreciate you tuning in to my 20th anniversary review of Kid A. If you want to see more more of my Radiohead content, then please tap this card that you see on screen now. Or if you want to see more in the future, then maybe like this video, share it out with a fellow Radiohead fan, and let me know what I should cover next. Other than that, there's more on screen now. There's also my socials that you can follow at the top link down below. I appreciate your ongoing support, and I'll be back soon with more on ARTV.